everybody. What's going on? Welcome to Cullen's Corner. We have a special edition for you all this evening. So I'm Paulette, and you know what to do. I'm Cullen. How are everyone doing tonight? Hey, Cullen. Well. All right, all right, all right. Listen, we have a big story tonight. We have uh, a special guest that is joining us this evening. And we thought that it would be best to start the end of January going into Black History Month with a story that needs to continue to be told. So if you guys are not familiar with us and you're new to the Brownstone family, we are the owners and founders of Brownstone Worldwide, which houses brownstoneworldwide.com. We have KCCR The Brownstone, which is first of all, a website, and it's also a podcast streaming app where we have our air personalities that hang out there and talk and commune amongst themselves. And then we also have Brownstone Living Magazine that is a part of our assets. Now, one of the things that we pride ourselves on and our tagline is changing the narrative on how we tell our stories our way. And so because of that, we thought that it would be best for us to have someone join us this evening to talk about telling our story our way. But before I do that, I want to hand it over to Cullen and we're going to be talking about how we got to this point. We're going to bring this sister on. <laughs> well, I know, for instance, um, you know, we, we live in Mobile, Alabama, Africa town, you know, and, you know, when Vita, First, when I first moved to Mobile, they took me all over, told me about Africa Town. I didn't know the the deep history of it mm -hmm. until we really started, you know, you know, telling me, you know, the stories about it, and you know, I've heard and learned from my wife's father. Yeah. But when I saw this show, when I saw this, and I saw how deep the rap, the rabbit hole goes, this mm. it was it was amazing because I'm like, wow, this is this is this is real. This is something yeah. that is part of history. And it's, yeah. I'm glad it's, it was able to be told the right way. So yeah. I'm so proud of my cousin, awesome. Alita. She's been doing an awesome job mm -hmm. telling the story and keeping it going, keep the momentum going. And okay. I'm, I'm so happy that she's able to join us. Awesome. Awesome. And so let's talk about Vita Robbins and what she's been doing. But let me let me. So I was I was lovingly corrected before I began. So I'm going to go here and we're actually going to find out a little bit more about what she is going to be talking to us about today. Uh, we're going to talk about the last known slave ship that arrived in the U.S. And it was called the Clotilda. And let me repeat that again. It was called the Clotilda. 159 years ago, approximately, slave traders stole Lorna Gale Wood's great-great-grandfather from what is now Benin in West Africa. Her acting witness from Smithsonian, y'all, was brutally ripped from his homeland along with 109 other Africans and brought to Alabama on the Clotilda, the last known slave ship to arrive in the United States illegally. Today, researchers have confirmed that the remains of a vessel long rumored to exist, but elusive for decades, had been found along the Mobile River near 12 Mile Island and just short of the Mobile Bay Delta. So from what I'm understanding, we're gonna be bringing her on here shortly. From what I'm understanding, there's a heavy story to this that is really disconcerting because Number one, slavery had already been outlawed. And they took this last trip, this uh, alleged last trip to Africa, to what they call Dahomey, which is now Benin, took these folks, dropped them off, and they were sold into the local area. And now their descendants are speaking out. So I've got something here that I want to share with you guys. I'm going to be sharing my screen. And I definitely want you guys to check this out so that you can see for yourself what I just saw um, that is blowing my mind, literally. Hang on just a second, folks, and we're going to share this. If it, if it will let me, because it did this before. And then we're going to bring Miss Vita on, okay? Um, and if I can't, doesn't look like she's going to let me today. She's being persnickety. But we'll get to it, and we will share it with you all 
later on. All right, so uh, Ms. Vita, let's go ahead and bring you on and let's start this conversation, shall we? Hey, lady, how are you? Hey, hey, everybody, I'm great. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Listen, I don't know where to begin, and that's hard for me. <laughs> Colin will tell you. Oh, I'm yeah. a talk. Yeah. Let's start with you. What happened? What's going on? What do we need to know and understand about the Clotilda? The damage that was done? The remnants that are left? The community that is still there? And what you are doing in getting that story out. Okay. Well, thank you guys for having me. Uh -huh. um, let's just start with where you were lovingly corrected. You know, this is a big deal. My third great grandparents were on that slave ship. My great, great, great grandparents, Coley and Rose Allen were on a slave ship. The story is that Timothy Mayer was a local businessman and, um, he commissioned this ship to be built and um, to, he commissioned this ship to be built. He made a bet. This is how much human lives meant to him. This was a bet that he could still bring Africans to the United States after slavery had been abolished. So he sent this ship to Dahomey, which is, which is now Benin, like you said. Um, these Africans had been captured by the Dahomey warriors. We think that we are from somewhere around Dahomey. We are not um, native of Dahomey. We were just captured there. That's where Barracoon came from. You've heard of the um, story Barracoon, the book Barracoon. The Barracoons are the um, like cages basically. That's where my people were when they were sold to the mayors and brought over here illegally. They were, um, they were let off the ship in the marsh for about 11 days um, and the ship was burned to conceal the crime. I'm careful to always say the crime yeah. because it was, um, it slavery was illegal at that point. Um, so we were not just the last slave ship to arrive here, the last slave ship to illegally arrive here. Gotcha. Um, my ancestors and the founders of Africa Town were enslaved for five years mm. and then they pulled their money together and bought land from the mayor family and founded the community that is now Africa town. Okay. So this community is the legacy of my ancestors and several others. Um, the story that you mentioned is that this community is surrounded on all four sides by some form of heavy industry. It's uh, whether it's chemical plants used to be a paper mill, mm -hmm. which is a double edged sword for a lot of people because people were employed by these, um, by this industry, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, this is the industry that put food on the table, but at the same time, it's the industry that is polluting your air and your water mm -hmm. and your ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's sustaining you at the same time, it's really hurting you. Okay. So quick question, um, mm -hmm. and Colin could chime in at any time. I know, I, like I said, y'all know I can talk now and I told you. So I'm curious, I, I, so Africa Town was built and it still stands. And there are families and people who still live here. Mm -hmm. And around Africa Town, an industry of sorts, major corporations have set up their plants near you all. So let me clarify. This is what my head is saying. So when we're talking about industry, I'm thinking chemicals, I'm thinking um, toxic things that may get into the soil. I'm thinking about things that the EPA should get involved with, right? So am I correct in saying that? Yes, you are. And the EPA, um, okay, there's an organization, at least one organization in Africa Town. There are several organizations that do different things, mm -hmm. but there are a couple of organizations that are about the environmental arm of this. Mm -hmm. And they have been working tirelessly for years um, dealing with the environment. Now, we recently, as a matter of fact, on January 6th, ironically enough, we mm. were in the White House mm. with the Office of the Vice President, the Council on Environmental Quality, yeah. and the Regional Director of the EPA um, is a Black man. Wow. And um, 
you know, he's very engaged with us. So we went there and we um, brought our case to them and just discussed, basically just discussed with them what resources are available to Africa Town. Mm-hmm. And so what we found is that we really need to get in, um, get behind our local government because they have to, they have to apply for these funds. Okay. And that's the part that has not been happening. So mm-hmm. now with that knowledge, we're about to get in our local governments behind yes. us mm-hmm. and, yeah. um, you know, get them to get some of this money and resources provided. But we're making strides toward that, but it's slow. There's been um, legislation, local legislation, where there is a safe zone that and this is a small victory. There's a safe zone where um, the industry that is around that's in historic Africa town. Mm-hmm. Not every single corporation, but um, some have been, they're not able to expand any further than they are. Mm-hmm. And they are an industry that comes into this area is not able to put in businesses that are any higher use than a certain, you know, warehouses or something like that. You know, mm-hmm. they can't bring in any heavy industry anymore. Um right. But that's not that's not every single. Now, there are some nuances to that. So that's still being dealt with. That's not every single piece of land and not every single industry. Uh-huh. You know, you know, Vita, I, I've heard, you know, I saw the documentary and I've you know heard from different family members of how the town was self-sustaining and the different things that the town had. And I always thought I always think about all the different black cities around the country that kind of like Black Wall Street that were flourishing and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. kind of cheated out. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about how Africa Town, you know, started to flourish and how that came about? Yeah. My understanding is that Africa Town had everything it needed. It had grocery stores. It had every business. It had a post office that it had local, that the residents of Africa Town were, um, they governed Africa Town. And it was incorporated into the city of Mobile. Now, I, I'm i not sure if I have this right, but I believe that it was within the in, in the 21st century mm-hmm. that it was incorporated into the city of Mobile. Um, mm-hmm. So before that, it was completely self-sustaining. But now the industry has, um, has been constantly encroaching on the community. The, there's a bridge, the Africatown Town. Um, Bridge, Cochrane Bridge, Bay Bridge Road is um, that's a bridge that was it was a smaller bridge before. Mm -hmm. And so this bridge trucks, um, big trucks come through here. A lot of traffic that gets you across the bay goes that way. But that bridge wiped out houses. we believe some of the cemetery is possibly lost to that bridge also. You know, there's, if you can imagine trucks, heavy, heavy 18 wheelers constantly coming through this, um, across this bridge and through this community. Yeah. Um, this bridge separates Africa town. It was, um, this is something I just learned about the numbers that there were, that there were about 12,000 residents in Africa town previously. Uh-huh. And now there are less than 2,000. Wow. My goodness. My yeah. goodness. Yeah. Residences are gone. Um, there's a lot of blight there. Yeah. Right. You know, people have left and just have not been able to fix up houses. Um, you know, this community started getting a lot of attention now that this um, this film came out. Yeah. And it's shining this light on this community. Mm-hmm. Um, now people are waking up, paying attention the yeah. fact that the Clotilda was found in 2019 is a big deal too, because this is also a story about oral history. Yes. And, yeah. Um, this is something that was just passed down to us forever. You know, we just knew this was our history, but people disputed it. People said this didn't happen. It was like local, um, like a local myth that this never happened. Okay. So, you know, um, that's why it was so important for the ship to be found. Now that it mattered to us, it's like for everybody else, we're like, okay, if that's what you needed, there you go. We told you that decades ago. And so, so the ship was found. Bear with me just a moment, because mm-hmm. I'm I'm trying to gain some clarity here to mm-hmm. kind of get so so that we can help set the stage for why 
Africa town is is literally it's a historical place, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. And and I'm also hearing that for decades, for eons now, this has been a rumor that this actually happened, this illegal taking of people as cargo mm -hmm. from Benin, Africa, and brought over here. The ship was burned over a bet that he could pull it off. And so now they found the ship in 2019, y'all, it's 2023. So it ain't been that long that this ship has been found. And so the, the claims, and we know how that goes, the claims of these beautiful black people have been validated. And so now with this newfound information, which by the way, so many stories I have heard about the Clotilda, right? So to literally be talking to one of the descendants, this is mind blowing to me. And so you guys built a community. You were freed five years after you were brought over here. Your family was brought over here. You freed yourselves and then um, you were freed. And then you purchased the land from the very individual that brought you over here illegally mm -hmm. and started Africa town, 12,000 residents. I need the, the listeners and the followers and the viewers on all of our platforms to hear this. And then all of a sudden, here comes industry. You all were self-sustaining. You had your own post office, your own businesses. And literally, the one thing that we've been trying to get back to forever, money was probably circling in this community over and over and over again. So there was wealth that was being brought up. And so now you've got industries that have come around and people needed jobs. They needed to feed their families. They needed health insurance. They needed to be able to pay their bills, keep the lights on. But the very same industries that are putting the food on the table, as what you stated, are the very companies that are causing neurological order, disorders and other issues in the children. Cancer is rampant in, in this community, from what I'm understanding. Am I, am, I, am I on the right path so far? Mm -hmm. And now, here we are with a bridge where we've got diesel trucks that are coming back and forth because of this industry that have destroyed homes and also burial grounds where your ancestors have laid. Am I, am I correct? Mm -hmm. You are oh. correct. The Plateau Cemetery is still there, it's still intact. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, some of those graves that are on the edge, we're not sure about you know, what, what has happened to those. Mm -hmm. um, there's also... I mean, yeah, it's just, it's, it's environmental racism. Mm -hmm. There we go. Environmental racism. Um, okay. Nobody is concerned. This industry, I mean, true, Mobile is a port city. Mm -hmm. and this community mm -hmm. is on the water. Yeah. But the fact that the industry is moving inward with, you know, it's no regard, no regard for these residents who are there. And the land, a lot of the land is still owned by the mayor family. Mm. My God. Is, they are leasing the land mm. to this industry. Get, okay. Yeah, well, I don't understand that. That's, that's the part that really burns me up because you would think since all this has come out, you know, number one, first time, first when I first heard about it, I'm thinking reparations. I'm thinking historical markers on the buildings. Yeah. You know, Mobile bringing money in so that they can build it up like they do a Mobile. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. how they're building up all these historical um, uh, markers and and and, and they should do that definitely for Africa Town. They should bring it in as a historical marker like they did, like, say, for instance, like the Civil Rights Museum in, in Birmingham. Mm-hmm. You know, in Montgomery, in Montgomery, it's like it should be something like that. Like, is that something that's been kind of uh, talked about? And mm -hmm. that's being worked on. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they're they're historic, like there are markers in front of Union Baptist Church. That was the church that was founded by um, the Clotilda Africans, and you'll see the thirty-two um, somewhere about. I think it has all thirty-two names on it in front of Union Baptist. My parents were married in that church. I was married in that church. My brother and his wife were married in that church. My children were baptized in that church. Mm. Um, so it has a marker and they're working on making this a historic, um, you know, being on the trail of historic um, 
places. So there's work that's coming along on that front. Yeah. But it took mm. um, to get a lot of this to happen. It took this discovery of the Clotilda. Now, mm. this film that um, the film Descendant okay. is um, we were in the middle of documenting this film when the shit was found. Wow. My God. Yeah. Yeah. We were. Mm. In, we let were me in let me just hold on. Yeah. This movie. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And that's you. That's me. Yeah. OK. And this is available currently on Netflix. Yes. 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 Okay. Streaming okay. on Netflix. OK. This um, this film has been so widely received. Yeah. Um, now, don't let me get away from the community if you're still ready to talk about that. But um, yes, this, of course. No, no, no. Go ahead. By all means. This film has been so widely received all over the world. Mm -hmm. And. We are, we're going um, film festivals throughout the country. We're traveling to those film festivals. And um, the love we get after these film festivals is amazing. Now, you know, there are two sides of this. There's, there's this celebrity that comes along with me being in this film. Mm -hmm. But I'm so happy that people hear me and want to talk about it because what I'm doing is taking it to shine and it right back on Africa Town. Yes. I it's like it. let's not forget what this is all about. Come on now, be here. People are so thankful mm -hmm. for us, um, to us for telling this story because this is a story that a lot of Black communities don't get a chance to tell. You know how many of our? I mean, I feel almost guilty for being able to know my history and know where my people came from. Yeah, to know a story like that because our history is so recent in the whole scheme of things. Mm -hmm. Like 162 years, I think. Um, that's recent when it comes to yeah. slavery. Right. So that's how we're able to know. So I'm thankful that we're able to know. And so we bring all our brothers and sisters along with us mm. that we can. Ooh. But it's amazing to be able to tell this story and for this attention to come back to Africa Town. Now we're collecting. <laughs> I know, Paulette. <laughs> I'm sorry. I this is wearing me out. Mm. It is. Now it's, but you know, I'm hopeful. But at the same time, you know, this is still Mobile, Alabama. Yeah. And when the lights go down, you know, this, everybody gets their 15 minutes of fame. You know, we might have, we might have two or three left when it comes down to it. This will fade quickly. So, um, you know, we're using the, we're using the attention to, just to do what we can for Africa Town to try to bring it back to what it was. I'm not. I'm not very interested in tourism. There are some who care about tourism. I'm not that interested mm -hmm. because um, I have been connected with Visit Mobile, with um, you know bringing tourism back to Mobile. I can't get a good answer to how um, tourism will benefit the community. Mm. Mm -hmm. Without that answer, I'm not interested in participating. Got it. You know, I don't want to make Mobile rich. Mm. I, I don't want to. Oh yeah, I, I don't want to bring, when tourism comes to Mobile, there's nowhere for people to stay in Africa town. There's nowhere for them to eat. Mm -hmm. So they are going to stay in Mobile. So Absolutely. of course Mobile is, um, is like, yeah, come to Africa town and then come to Mobile to stay. So I'm not interested in bringing tourism, honestly. I'm interested in bringing this community back to a residential community, like right. where there's space available. I want to see houses and I want to see business that that is needed. There is a food desert. Mm -hmm. There's no health care. There used to be um, health care. There's no health care there. You know, people may have transportation issues where they are not able to easily access health care. Yeah. So, you know, can we bring some of that back? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So. um <sighs> So here's a here's a here's a, a loaded question. It's so many layers to this. Mm -hmm. So my brain is like firing. I see all of these cylinders. I know y'all can see like my I'm like, OK, OK, OK. So. I am curious. When we say that there was black flight or blight. Um, and the descendants moved to the mainland, let's just call it what it is, because they needed to be able to survive. Has there been the communication of bringing those folks back to Africa town to help 
rebuild or to bring folks to Africa Town to rebuild? Oh, absolutely. That's question number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, I'm going to put this on to the side. One of the things that I, I recognize is that the areas that were once destitute and desolate that many people wouldn't touch 20, 30 years ago because of the climate, you know, now everybody wants a piece of these areas for redevelopment. And my concern is, is just like here in Georgia, on the, on the southern region of Georgia, a lot of those families are selling out and they're like, I don't want big mama's land. I don't want nothing to do with it. Give me the million dollars and I'll walk away. But we lose so much in that. Has mm -hmm. there been that talk with folks of trying to rebuild from our perspective, from black folks, you know, getting a group of, you know, collective folks that look like us to get there? and to help to save this town, this historic mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually something that's um, that people are concerned about. It's still, it's not something that's set in place or you know that's ready to go because the thing is, um, this, this found us, like they found us and we weren't ready for this yet. Mm. It just happened. The ship was found, so it brought a lot of attention here, but that didn't mean we were ready for all these things. Right. So. Yes, we are concerned about um, about bringing people back to the area, but right now there there's so much to be done before people can come back. Mm -hmm. First of all, when you find spaces available, you have to deal with zoning. Mm -hmm. Like there may be an empty lot, but what is it zoned as? Yeah, who owns it? Where yeah. is it located? What if it's located right next door to a chemical plant? Mm -hmm. um, you know, who can live there? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot to figure out as far as zoning and what space is available and what it's available for. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so there are people who want to come back. I, I do always have my antenna up for people who want to um, take advantage of, you know, being a part of Africa Town. There's always yeah. somebody who wants to just get some shine. Um, people are going to want to buy in Africa Town. Absolutely. To, um, you know, to have... Um, Okay, my husband just came home, so you'll hear a little noise back there. Okay. Okay. Um, so people who will want to come and own a piece of it, but they may be holding it for the wrong reasons. So um, we have to be we have to be on we have to be on um, on guard for that. Yeah, absolutely. So there's um, yeah, that's that's something that's a work in progress. Okay. Okay. So I'm curious. I have, a, I have so many questions. And again, y'all stop me at any time. Jump in. Jump in. I am curious. In all of this, this family that is leasing the land, what was their name? Is it the Myra, the Mayor's? Mayor, M-E-A-H-E-R. Those so, were ah. people who were, were enslavers. Mm. I... I'm trying to wrap my whole color and stop me. Like, I'm, don't stop. No, <laughs> I, I just, I just get upset the fact that they've made so much money. There from you the go. Area and from the people that they brought over, and are continuing. And continuing. Yes, they are continuing to do at it. you all's expense and at your lives. So, mm -hmm. who holds this family accountable? If you find out, let me know. Oh man, wow. So that's ongoing. Basically. They legally own this land. Mm -hmm. They, you know, the powers that be um, zone this land to be used for what it's being used for. So that's one of my questions, you know, who, who holds them accountable? So it's just a matter now of you know, we have to really hold our local government accountable. Right. And that's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. So now that we are getting more insight as to who's responsible for this, you know, that's where we know, that's how we know where to go to deal with it. But some of this damage cannot be undone. No. Because it's not that easy to move a chemical plant. No. You know, where, where are you going to go? How, how do you do that? Right. And what is going to make them do that? That's where, again, to your point, what you were saying earlier, um, you were talking about, you know, those leaders in government who are um, 
responsible for making sure that laws get passed and so forth and those kinds of things. I am mind blown at this point that this family is still benefiting 160 something years later mm -hmm. from the plight of bringing over your family members. Mm -hmm. I, so we can't hold nobody accountable. I'm, I'm, I'm not believing that. So and you, you, who we need to vote in? I, you know, and like you said, when you find out, let me know. Now nah, I'm fired up. I'm ready to pack my bags. Look, I'm four <laughs> hours away. What we need to do? What, what? Listen. Yeah. But see, this is the question. You know, is it goes back to like the question of reparations. Nobody knows how that happens. I mean, it's it's a conversation that I honestly don't know. Because the people who the people who sent the ship are not here. Um, the people who are on the ship are not here. Right. And how do you know, like, you know, how do you know how to even who who deserves reparations? How do you pay reparations? Do you pay it to individuals or do you, you know, or does the community benefit? Who knows? And, um, you know, there are studies going on regarding that, how, how you deal with that. But we are not going to see the results of that. But I think here's my I think my question more so even past reparations is the health and the sanctity of this community of people, right? Because I heard mm -hmm. what you said when you talked about um, the people that ha have become ill. I watched the video mm -hmm. and and the children that are impacted and how a study should be done to find out how the toxic area has impacted the community. So mm -hmm. now I'm curious because the mayors or the mahers or whomever they are, <laughs> somebody ought to lock their arms and stop them. That has to happen. That has to, because they're, because at, at all accounts, the scent of slavery is still there in some way. Right. Because they leased the land. Y'all going to work on the land that they leased. And they're still benefiting from the works of your brothers and sisters and your ancestors, your aunties, your uncles, your family members. That's still slavery in 2023. Mm -hmm. And I'm pissed. Like, yeah. I'm pissed. Yeah, you should be. So are we. Oh, my God. And at the same token, here's another thing. It's so many, like I said, there's so many layers and my brain is on fire. So when we're talking about this, we're also talking about a people that want to sustain the legacy of what is left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to, you're not going to willingly leave like some have. Yeah. Cause you're looking for something else to change. Mm -hmm. and you want to be a part of that change. Mm -hmm. So do you mind, can you take me back down that lane of what, what you, you got? Okay. So we got the Netflix movie mm -hmm. and, and you all have been working with local officials. You've also been working with the government and the EPA. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you break that down for us? What's happening right now? Well, that's basically it is that um, it's just trying to find out what is available, what resources are available mm -hmm. and what it takes. It's it's going to it's small steps, little steps at a time um, because there's so much to be done. Mm -hmm. So there there are different battles on different fronts. There are people dealing with the um, with the environmental, the um, with the environmental leg of it, a couple of yep. groups in Africa Town dealing with that. Mm -hmm. um, the safe zone is is something. Um, so we it's like the next step from here is to see what is to get with our local government to apply for these funds okay. that are available. Okay. And as far as redevelopment goes, you know, it's identifying what land is available. Yeah. And to find out what can be done with that land. Okay. And then to find, um, you know, there are people who want to have business in Africa town, people who want to live there. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, incremental steps to get those things accomplished. Um, they're trying to bring tourism um, to make sure tourism benefits Africa town. Yes. You know, these people don't want to be, these people don't like the way they say it is that we don't want to be treated like zoo animals. I don't blame them. Yeah. They don't want people just riding through looking at them like, you know, look at the poor little community. 
and then right. leave and be like, oh, I went to Africa town. Right. Yeah. They you don't know, like that. I see, I see it as as me seeing as just like you said, you know, you know your ancestry, you know your, you know, where you came from. And I've I've been all my life trying to map out our our you know where we come from. So I, I find it so intriguing. Yeah. That you guys can map it all the way to Africa, you know, and to me, that should that that story should be told as well because mm -hmm. not a lot of us that are here can do that. And so mm -hmm. I, that that's that's the first thing that struck me when I first moved to Mobile. And yeah. Charles Charles told me about you know African Town and the and you know the things about it, and to me that just blows my mind. Yeah, I want to know. I want to know um, how did Quest Love come about? Um, doing the show he actually found out he was a descendant about five years ago on wow. finding your roots mm -hmm. he found out that he was a descendant yes. okay. okay yeah and okay. when this film came out um i don't know the mechanics of how he got here but he is a, an executive producer mm -hmm. yeah. on this film um sometime this year like i met him we we text each other you know we've gotten to be we're, we've gotten to be like family with mm -hmm. him finding this because he's joined our family mm -hmm. um, he's been here recently there was um, a series a web series called The Descendant Cookout and, wow. and Quest Love and he's just a mirror to us that's how he wants to be known you know Quest Love is when he's at work he's a mirror to us mm -hmm. so okay. he came down to do The Descendant Cookout and that's when he took his first tour of Africa Town um, Joycelyn Davis is his um, family member. She's also in the film. Mm -hmm. um, so he's taking his first tour and he's just available for whatever we need him for. We haven't identified yet, but he's very on board and wow. very much, he very much cares about what happens with his community. So I his ancestors, um, Charles and Maggie Lewis are his ancestors. Wow. And he okay. just found that out years ago. Now, for him to come down here, I mean, I was on a call when he met Joycelyn for the first time. Yeah. And to just see that connection happen yeah. is just amazing. Oh, yeah. my God. So he's got a new family, too. That's this all right. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. And I'm thinking about so many of us, um, because what we do here, like we said before, with Brownstone Worldwide, is it's our responsibility to change the narrative by telling our story mm -hmm. our way. Mm -hmm. And we have to be able to do that. And so we're telling the hard story. This is a hard story to talk about. Mm -hmm. And the many nuances that make up this entire experience for you all, because you all's experience is our experience, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And and to that, like Cohen, what you said um, is, we have to find out where we come from. Some of us will never know. Mm -hmm. um, and you all are the storytellers. Yes. You are the griot of yes. your family. I have, there is, my father is the griot. He is the last living sibling. Mm -hmm. And we know where we came from. We can trace it all the way back to the first, the first African that landed here. Many people mm -hmm. can't do that. Mm -hmm. And so I think we should begin with those stories, but we need to find out how we can support what's happening right. in Africa town. What do we do? Yes. Well, let me address what you said about um, the, the storytelling and to knowing where you came from. It's really important that Michelle Obama is behind this. Wait, let me back up and tell you this part first. Okay. This film premiered at Sundance Film Festival earlier last year. It was immediately picked up by Netflix and mm -hmm. Higher Ground, which is the Obama's film production company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We met the Obamas, had dinner with them at Martha's Vineyard last year at the Martha's Vineyard African American oh. Film Festival. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is their baby. Wow. So Michelle Obama, Forever First Lady, is big on storytelling and talking to mom and them. So talk to your people like Cullen and I, Cullen is my cousin on my father's side. Okay. And we have a cousin who has taken on um, interviewing our family members to be able to pass this history down, you know, on that side. Mm -hmm. So it's important to talk to your family, talk to mom and them. Yes. My mother collects um, obituaries mm. 
And that's a good way to find out who's related to who. So start asking questions and get your family tree. Trace it back as far as you possibly can. Yeah. There's the internet and just go as far as you can, but start mm -hmm. talking to each other. Talk to your people above you and talk to your children mm -hmm. and let them know where you came from. Absolutely. So that's very important. Um, tell me the last question you asked. What was so I how can we support you? What do we need to do? This community, the Brownstone and, community. And you did okay. mention something about uh, Michelle Obama that she had like, like a, a hashtag we can use. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Now, as far as there's, um, they're doing a descendant challenge for, and that's just for people to just, you know, go look at your family and get to know your history. But that's not really what supports the community. Um, go to Descendant Film dot com and that is a site that's been set up that um talks about the it has listed several of the groups in africa town that are doing work so you can go there and you can see what um what speaks to you like what cause speaks to you mm -hmm. and sign on for that um you know reach out to the people um in those groups but yeah. mainly just find out what moves you and what you care about if you mm -hmm. care about environmental justice, then sign on for that. Um, mm -hmm. Because you can you can support, it's not just financial support. Like yeah. I'm collecting people everywhere I go. What can you do? What You're an electrician? Okay, let me get your number. Because right. we don't know what we're going to need just yet. But mm -hmm. when we find out, we're reaching out to people and we're, we're forming a coalition all over the country. I love it. So DescendantFilm.com is a good place to start to find out the organizations that you can support okay. right now. Okay. But just oh stay in touch. Yeah. Yeah. Just stay in touch. And it's, you know, we're we're not gonna see change like right now, mm -hmm. right? But it's we're moving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're moving in a lot of different directions. Nobody's sitting still. We're taking taking advantage of the fact that this film is out and people are watching. So my, 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 my. Yeah, yeah, when when our 15 minutes are up, we're still gonna be on the ground. Absolutely. And that is where it's going to be important for mm -hmm. people like us, myself, mm -hmm. and, you know, the corner family and the Brownstone family and all of the people that are behind us and connected to us in mm -hmm. business or whatever, um, mm -hmm. to hear this story firsthand. This is so important. And I don't know why I'm still stuck on this family that's least in this land. Yeah. Yeah. You should be stuck on them. It was a it was a criminal act. Yep. I mean, the, like the caucasity, the caucasity. Yes. Yes. Wait that, <laughs> yeah. That just makes you feel like, like it's just a game. You're sitting here playing cards and just decide, um, you know, I know slavery is over. I know it's punishable by death, mm -hmm. but I can get away with it. And he did watch this. And, and you know, family is still benefiting. That's what's That's the crazy part. Me. Yeah. And the thing is, is, has no one talked to this family before we wrap? Has anybody talked to this family? The family has recently made a statement. Um, they right around the time that the film was released in Mobile and on Netflix. Yeah. Um, they made a statement talking about, and it's the first time they've made a statement in all this time. So the timing is really interesting hmm. um, in decades and 160 years, you know, hmm. but they basically, um, they basically have said that what their ancestors did was unforgivable and it was evil and all those things. And they, um, you know, they, they were grieving the loss of their mother, I think. Don't care. So, yeah. Yeah. So there, there's that. That's, that's about it. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's hard because these people who are here didn't do it, but they're still mm. reaping the benefits. That's right. my point. Yeah. 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 So it's I mean, um, they're not doing anything to so so stop leasing the land then. Yep. Right. Clean right. that mess up and help fix the issues that your ancestors yep. did. Because see, you all are still dealing with it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. 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 That's you know, okay. and that's that's to come. Mm. So we'll Very see good. what they what they are willing to do. Mm -hmm. But it remains to be seen. Wow. Woo. Okay. Stay tuned. Right. Stay tuned. All right. So I know our time is up. Um, Cullen, I'm, I'm gonna leave it over to you because I need a drink. I need a whole <laughs> drink. Mm. Well, Vita, we really appreciate you coming on and telling the story. We will definitely 
um, have your support, whatever you need. We, we you know you have it from us. Um, keep us informed on what's what the next steps are. You know, if you, you know, we, I'm fully invested. We're fully invested. We want to know how to get the story, continue to get the story out, even when the 15 minutes are over. Yes. And, yes. Um, and one, I want to, you know, I want to continue to, you know, voice this. And, and, and I, we, we believe in speaking for the voiceless. Yep. And there's a lot of voiceless people in Africa town. And we just need to continue to fight for it because this one community, there are a uh, hundred other communities out there that are just Absolutely. like this one. And we want them to see if we can do it for this community, we can do it for others. So, Absolutely. Yeah. We're connecting with these communities through this film. So, you know, there's strength in numbers. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. We will keep you updated. Um, don't know what, what's needed yet, but we will keep you updated. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so no. much. I'm still kind of flabbergasted, but I know we have to wrap it up. So, Vita, I'm, I'm with Cullen. I, we appreciate you coming on. You have our full support. Uh, for those of you all who are going to be watching this and listening later, uh, please know that it will live at BWTV on brownstoneworldwide.com. Um, you'll be able to see uh, this beautiful sister and this story on the cover of the February issue, our Black History issue. Uh, of Brownstone Living Magazine. And if you want more information about how you can get your copy, go over to brownstoneworldwide.com and you can go ahead and start the sign up process now. And we'll make sure to get you a link so you can hit subscribe to this heavy, heavy, heavy Black history uh, issue. So um, with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and take my flabbergasted self off the air. <laughs> and, that energy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, um, this, 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 I appreciate you for sharing the story. Thank uh, you for having me. Absolutely. So we're going to wrap up here. Uh, as we always say at the end of every show, we are going to continue to change the narrative of how we tell our stories our way at Brownstone Worldwide. Have a great night.